Hello everyone, so today I am here to do a video that I've honestly been wanting to do for a while because I feel like people haven't like specifically wanted this video, but I feel like you guys like unintentionally ask for it, which is basically if you like this Murakami, try this other book. This is a pretty popular like format on booktube, I'm sure everyone has seen a video like this. I'm just going to specifically be doing Murakami books. So I'm going to be talking about a Murakami book and recommending you a non-Murakami book. And obviously this can work the other way of if you've read the book that I'm talking about, read the Murakami book. And I really tried to think about these recommendations and not just do like the super obvious ones. I feel like the thing that always bothers me about these videos is I sometimes see a book that I'm like, oh yeah, I'd love to read something similar to that. And they recommend the most obvious like recommendation like if you read fangirl read elijah and her monsters i'm like wow never would have guessed that one so i decided to really try to think about these and a couple of them i did definitely based on tropes very specific tropes um but mostly i tried to go for more so feeling and like atmosphere more than just like a plot point um so yeah i hope you guys all enjoyed this video and hopefully someone gets a recommendation out of it and yes, I also did try to do uh, as many books that I feel like people ask about as possible and not just my favorites. So um, yeah, let's just get on into it. <laughs> so the first recommendation I have is actually my least favorite Murakami book, but I feel like it's a lot of people's favorites, so I knew I had to include it. And that is Sputnik Sweetheart by Murakami. And this is a book that follows a man who's in love with a lesbian. And this is one that I just kind of went for a trope because, again, this is not my favorite Murakami, so I didn't really have any ideas for underlying themes or atmosphere or feeling for it, so I went more for a trope. <laughs> but I'm going to be recommending the only other LGBT Japanese literature book I have ever read or heard of, and I feel like not a lot of people have heard of it, especially because I reviewed it a little bit ago and everyone was like, I've never heard of this book. So, if you like Sputnik Sweetheart and enjoyed the LGBT themes and discussions that are in this book, I recommend, oh good, Twinkle Twinkle by Kari Ukunai. Um, this follows a man and a woman who get into a relationship out of necessity. The man is gay and the woman is dealing with a lot of mental health issues and alcoholism and is basically about their marriage and also a lot about platonic love and about also LGBT people and gay people and mental health in Japan, which are very taboo subjects. So I thought Twinkle Twinkle did an amazing job tackling them and I found it a really, really interesting book to read, especially because again, not a lot of literature does discuss LGBT people or um, mental health things in Japan, I find. So yeah, it's if you liked one of these, definitely try the other one because they both do tackle those very specific tropes. My next Murakami is Wind Up Red Chronicle, which is my favorite Murakami book. There's all my tabs. I know everyone likes to see this edition. Yeah, so Wind Up Red Chronicle is probably... I, I personally think it's Murakami's masterpiece. I know a lot of people think it's 1Q84. I personally think Wind Up Red Chronicle and 1Q84 are pretty even on the mass... like absolutely masterful crafting. Um, Wonder Bird Chronicle follows Toro Okada who is a man who basically this entire like catalyst for this book happening is that he loses his cat and his wife tells him to go find the cat and then a lot of things start happening and really weird stuff starts happening. This is a book that I've never been able to compare to another book so I have two recommendations based on different parts of this novel. My first recommendation is If Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura. This is another piece of Japanese literature. I swear not all of these are going to be other Japanese books. It just happened to be these first two. But um, If Cats Disappeared from the World is I feel like a pretty popular one but I feel like it's obvious like I'm recommending this because it has to do with cats but I genuinely think the atmosphere and like the uniqueness of the stories really are similar. So If Cats Disappeared from the World is about a man who finds out that he has a terminal illness and the devil comes to him and tells him that he will give him one extra day to live past his expiration date if he makes something disappear from the world. So um, one day, you know, he gets rid of cell phones. The other days he gets rid of music and it has to be something very dear to him. And this is 
just as weird as it sounds. I personally was a little bit let down by it just because I thought that the author could have gone so much further and he didn't but I still think it is a wonderful wonderful book and if you enjoy the fact that this entire book is literally because he loses his cat like I do because I feel like so many people try to describe this book and like guys it's about a guy finding his cat like that is the entire book you you can try to make it sound like it's about something else but it really is just about Tori trying to find his dang cat <laughs> and this is about a man and his relationship with his cat and I think it's really really great and yeah so that's kind of my obvious pick for this that might not be obvious to other people but I think they're both very unique and both about cats so there you go and my other recommendation for Wonderbird Chronicle is Born by Jeff Vandermeer and this is definitely an atmosphere thing so Born is probably one of if not the weirdest book I have ever read in my life it is one of my favorite books of all time and before I read this though this was the weirdest book I'd ever read so if you like the strangeness of either one of these novels I really do suggest the other one because both of these make you kind of actually incredibly confused throughout the entire novel but you're like okay being confused like it's not about knowing what's happening it's much more about just the journey of it kind of thing and yeah these are two of the weirdest books I've ever read and they don't have much in common except for that very weird atmosphere so this is much more of just an atmospheric kind of recommendation but Born is a sci-fi novel um, that follows a woman and her partner and they live in this kind of post-apocalyptic world where their god and ruler is a giant flying bear named Mord and this woman finds this little plant that becomes sentient out in the desert and stuff happens it's a weird book but yeah I definitely recommend these two together for sure my next book is my second favorite Murakami book and that is Wild Sheep Chase this one is basically about a man who is a journalist and he publishes an article with a photo of this sheep with a star on its butt and basically gets a call from a guy being like where did you get this photo we need to find out where you got this photo from and he was like I don't know I just like found it Eh, and then it's kind of his journey of finding whoever took this photo and it's it gets real weird and there's the dolphin hotel stuff like that this one's to me it was personally a very obvious recommendation but it's very hard to dis like explain why without spoiling either book so you're just gonna have to trust me on this my recommendation for wild sheep chase is bunny <laughs> by mona awad this was my one of my favorite books of 2019 if you saw my video i absolutely love this book i've read it twice in 2019 it's it's great and again very hard to tell you why these are similar i just personally think that the feeling of the endings of both of these books are very similar in a what the fuck did I just read kind of way and I just I really I, I don't know immediately upon thinking about Wild Sheep Chase I was like I have to recommend Bunny. Bunny is about a girl who is in her master's of creative writing and basically there is like this cult of girls who are in her cohort and they invite her basically into the cult and kind of what happens after that there's a lot of weird shit that happens and that's basically all I can say <laughs> you're this one I I can't tell you why I'm doing this but if you've read both of these books you I feel like you're gonna understand me like if anyone else has read both of these books please tell me that you feel me on this <laughs> because it has to do with the ending is all I can really say. My next Murakami book is After Dark and this is about a girl who basically this takes all, place all in one day love it actually one night really and this is about a girl who basically she's sitting at a Denny's and gets wrapped up in stuff happening around her in I think they're in Tokyo I kind of yes in Tokyo at nighttime there's you know a woman who is a prostitute then there's some other things that happen it's very hard to explain but then also there is kind of this side plot of her sister is in a very very deep sleep and can't seem to wake up and this kind of very voyeuristic plot line of her sister 
And this is probably the Murakami book that has the least amount of a plot and much more just like exploring atmosphere and ideas. But this is one of my favorite Murakami books also. <laughs> And if you like After Dark, I personally would recommend either Recursion by Blake Crouch or Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I don't have my copy of Dark Matter, I give it to my boyfriend. But I personally just think that the atmosphere of these books, Blake Crouch books and After Dark, are just very, very similar. Recursion is about a world where people begin to lose their memories and like their entire lives. So like one, every once in a while you'll wake up or like people wake up and everything that they thought their life was you know they were married and they lived in Wyoming with their child and husband suddenly they're a businesswoman in New York City without a family and things kind of start changing and people have separate lives than they were actually they're actually living and then Dark Matter is based on Shogat Dinger's cat which is if you put a cat in a box with food and poison before, until you open that box the cat is both dead and alive. Uh, this recommendation is definitely based off of the girl who is asleep and just kind of a very unsettling feeling is how I would describe that kind of plot line as well as recursion and dark matter. They're very much just like make you think really really hard. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what After Dark is really about and like what was going on in it and I've read it twice now and Blake Crouch books constantly just make me sit there and just think about what's going on in the world. <laughs> so yeah, this might seem like a kind of random recommendation, but I do personally think it works. So yeah, if you like Dark, uh, if you like After Dark, definitely check out like Crouch, Recursion, or Dark Matter. My next Murakami is, of course, 1Q84. This is, again, this was, it, I feel like most people consider Murakami's masterpiece. Um, this is a massive um, book all about a woman named Omame who somehow gets into this parallel dimension of, I think they're in Tokyo, right? I feel like all of them are set in Tokyo. And she gets into this parallel dimension as well as another man named Tango who also manages to get into this parallel dimension of 1Q84 and this parallel dimension you know has two moons in the sky and there's little people who come out of goats and it's very weird there's chrysalises that people go into very weird book and kind of how those plot lines come together again very odd <laughs> and has one of the biggest payoffs I've ever read in a book and that's where my recommendation comes into play because I am of course going to recommend Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. I can't hold both these books at once. <laughs> Imaginary Friend by Ch Stephen Chbosky is the other book that I have read in my life that was this huge, that I personally felt like actually had a huge payoff. Both of these books are very slow going in the beginning and a lot of world building and kind of setting up for things while also constantly giving you hints and giving you more and more plot and a lot a lot of tension building like both of these are books that like you know what's happening but you also are like what is this going to lead up to like what is the ending going to be and I personally love that so much. That is like my new favorite thing in literature is that tension building of just what's gonna happen. It's become my favorite thing to find in books. And I found that Imagine My Friend and 1Q84 are two of the books that did it the best that I've ever read because they are huge, absolutely massive. And some people would probably argue that they both don't need to be this big, but I personally, they're both just those books that you pick up and you just, are along for a ride and it's so much it has so much payoff at least in my personal opinion that some other people might not agree with a lot of people don't like this book but I think if you enjoyed 1Q84 and just the slow almost meandering but still giving you a lot of information as the story goes on building up to this ending that is a huge payoff I think you'd like Imaginary Friend. They are very different. Imaginary Friend is a horror novel that follows a single mom and her son. Her son goes missing in the woods for like six days, comes back and he's a genius. And he also has an imaginary friend called the Nice Man. And this imaginary friend is telling him to build a treehouse. That is the basic premise of this book. <laughs> and 
again, I just think if you enjoyed the largeness and payoff of One Cupid Far, you'll uh, really like Imaginary Friend too. Oh, they, they came to say hello. <gasps> How's my pretty girl? Okay. <laughs> yeah, Tete? What you want? What you want? Yeah? I'm filming. Oh, Ganesha. There's my big girl. There's my big girl. <laughs> oh, you were so cute. You're so cute. Oh my God. <laughs> She's literally just like sitting at my feet. <laughs> so, Tete, come on. Yeah, there you go. So the next book I have is, of course, Kafka on the Shore by Murakami. <laughs> this is, I feel like, one of Murakami's most popular books. This follows a young runaway who names himself Kafka, um, and he runs away from home for a reason that you find out about in the book. And basically it follows him kind of exploring himself and like learning about himself and we also follow a parallel t uh not timeline a parallel story of this man who can talk to cats after he had an accident when he was a child that a bunch of him and his like classmates all like passed out from this gas i think it was um and kind of how they're parallel like how they kind of come together this is a weird one there's like fish that like rain from the sky <laughs> and there's a boy named crow who is kafka's kind of imaginary friend and it's a weird one it's very hard to explain but for kafka on the shore i would recommend lincoln in the bardo by something sanders i can't remember his first name but, but lincoln in the bardo is like on the same level of weird as Kafka to me. Um, Lincoln and the Bardo is basically based off of the fact that is it Abraham Lincoln's son died. He like like went into the morgue or like the tomb and like would hold his son and cry. And it's based like all on that and it's kind of almost told like I want to call it almost like a play. I really recommend the audio. It's a full cast audio and kind of these like ghosts and spirits that talk to this dead son. And I don't know, honestly, the feeling of these books is just very, very similar and it's very hard to explain. Kind of how this book is hard to explain and this book is hard to explain in general. It's kind of hard to explain why they're similar, except for the fact that just the atmosphere is very, very similar. Next up, I have Killing Commendadore, which is Murakami's newest novel. And this one is kind of another like trope, but also like atmosphere at the same time. Basically, it's only two books I've ever read that gave me this feeling. And I don't know whether it's because of the trope or if it's just the feeling I got from these books. Killing Commendadori is about a man who, unnamed narrator, who becomes friends with this neighbor of his that when he like moves somewhere new, who is a painter. Or no, he's not a painter. He's living in an old painter's house though. And there's um, like paintings up in his attic and one of them might come to life, maybe? And it's, it's a hard book to explain. And then there's also this whole plot with his neighbor and stuff going on there. The book that I would recommend with Killing Commendadori is um, The Girl with the Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. And this is the only other book that I've read that's about like painting and art, except for Vincent Theo, which is about Vincent Van Gogh. Um, and I just, I don't know why I feel like the feeling is very similar between these two books. And I don't know whether it's because of the painting elements or not, but I just remember like finishing this book and being like, oh my god, do I like books about painting? Like that's such a specific thing to like, but they, they both are very, very similar and they both do have this painter aspect to them. And The Girl with the Pearl Earring is about, oh god, who's the painter? The painter who does the Girl with the Pearl Earring painting. Oh god. I, every time I talk about this book, someone calls me stupid in the comments because I can never remember the painter's name. I don't know anything about painting, guys. Like, I am the least artistic person known to mankind. But it is about the girl who was the model for this painting. I don't know if it's actually based on true facts or anything, but it's about her story and how she was this very poor girl who gets hired as their maid and then this kind of weird sexual tension that happens between her and the painter and also this painting that he does of her and kind of how it affects her as a person and her life. 
The next Murakami I have is Hardboiled Wonderland and the End of the World. This is a book that follows two parallel timelines. Seems to be a thing with Murakami now that I'm realizing it. Basically in one we're following a man who is kind of working with a mad scientist and his daughter um, about the end of the world. And then there's another timeline where there's a man who just got to this kind of fantasy world town that's enclosed by a wall and there are unicorns and he is the dream reader of these unicorns. When they die he like takes their skulls and reads their memories and how those two parallel timelines interconnect. And it's also a lot about the end of the world. That's all the times that it mentions end of the world. <laughs> and for this one, I would personally recommend Neverworld Wake by Marisha Pestle. This is a NA, I would call more than YA, um, kind of sci-fi speculative book about a group of kids who they get together for the first time after leaving for college and they all go to this house, they get drunk out like like out drinking they come back and they very very narrowly avoid a really bad accident and then later on into the night they get a knock on the door from this man who tells them that they actually all did die in that car crash and they are all currently stuck in a never world wake which is basically between reality and death and basically these kids have to live the same time period over and over and over again until they decide the one person that gets to survive this death so i think there were five of them four or five of them and they have to pick one person to survive and it has it has to be a consensus it cannot just be like majority or anything every single person has to agree that this one person gets to survive and it was fascinating. It was wonderful. And I personally, the atmosphere is quite similar to them, but also there is obviously this very much over, overhead idea of the end of the world and dying and kind of the themes that are explored between those two ideas. I personally recommended this rather than just another book about death and dying because I've read a lot of those because of the speculativeness. This one, of course, has that very interesting fantasy unicorn world and I felt like just recommending a contemporary book wouldn't satisfy that weirdness of that. So that's why I wanted to recommend another speculative book that deals with similar themes. And I personally think this one and Hardboiled Wonderland are actually very similar if you read them next to each other. But anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and I hope someone out there got a recommendation. Again, I feel like people wanted this video for a while. If you guys want more recommendations on the Mur Murakami books I didn't do, definitely just tell me down in the comments below and maybe I'll make a part two. Who knows? But anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and I love y'all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!